I'd like to then move for us and really talk about, uh, for just a few minutes here, sort of where are the unmet needs? Where are, and I think we've made great strides in really treating patients with metastatic melanoma. But Mike, stage four disease, you know, if you were to given three things that are truly the unmet need at the moment that we need to determine, what are those three things for you? Okay, great, Robert. So I think the most important questions really are who can we select to give treatment with the least side effect possible to still get a response or some favorable anti-tumor effect? And who do we justify more aggressive kind of combinatorial treatment of some form? And how do we make those decisions? So that is on the biomarker area and we still have a way to go, unfortunately, until we can really have something that's ready for clinical prime time. We don't really, aside from the BRAP and MEK combination, which we clearly know that combination needs to be given together in a BRAP mutant patient who you're considering targeted therapy, with immune therapies and other combinations, we still really don't have proof yet that you have to give combination treatment to patients that are that increase toxicity to all patients or who do, should we be treating, and we need longer term information on that in terms of overall survival. So I think number one, who can we get away with giving the least toxic treatment and still having a benefit? Number two, I would still say that brain metastases remain an unmet clinical need. We need to think about, as a field, how do we study these patients with brain metastases? We've been in patterns where patients are excluded from clinical trials with brain metastases, and then subsequently we're later conducting phase two trials to see the efficacy of these approved drugs in the brain. And I would advocate we have to think about this earlier in development and try to incorporate these patients as we're learning about the drugs for the first time. And then the third unmet need in clinical management of stage four patients is really trying to understand better about managing toxicities of these patients and that we're often left to overall sharing our clinical experiences with these patients, but we haven't really done as many trials as we need about the right way to manage these side effects. And unlike in some types of approaches where we have specific immunosuppression that can be used to treat specific toxicities that are caused by some drugs, we don't have that in melanoma yet, and so we need to have a better idea of how to support all of our patients that can have tremendous benefit from these treatments, but that can also have some side effects and how we can mitigate any adverse events in those situations. So we've come a long way. It's, it's all very exciting. I think we'll continue to move the ball forward quickly. Yeah. Any other unmet needs from anyone in stage four? Tony, well, any additional unmet needs? Oh, uh, the main medical need is the patients who don't respond to these therapies. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I guess I, it's really that sort of, if you look at the uh, immunotherapies here, is that we have that 30% of patients that in the first scan that we do at uh, three months out, that we have the 25 to 30% of patients who just don't respond. And I think we need to understand those patients. Yeah. It's actually uh, the, um, the upfront resist, uh, or the primary resistance primary to resistance, anti-PD-1 yeah. therapy is around uh, 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 6 to 70%. Uh, now we know we can improve uh, uh, those numbers by giving the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab, but there si still seems to be a ceiling of what immunotherapy, combination immunotherapy can do, and we've talked at length about the toxicities. But it's the patients who do not respond that we, that we need to understand who they are, why their immune system is not poised to be turned on by taking away its breaks. Do we need to turn it on in some other way? Uh, do we need to take away some immune suppressive uh, cells or factors that the tumor is making that is preventing the immune system from attacking. Mm -hmm. But then from the BRAF and MEK inhibitor therapy, which is outstanding therapy initially in the majority of patients, resistance develops in many cases, not all. And uh, we've studied over the last five years a lot, or, or, or um, even longer than that, what are the mechanisms of resistance. We've defined many of them, but there's this subset of them that we don't, we don't really know. And that is not allowing us to do the next step, which is turn this excellent initial therapy into a long-lasting therapy. We hope that by doing the triple therapy, BRAF, MEK plus PD-1 or PDL one we may turn some of those transient responses to long-lasting responses, but we still don't know, and that's uh, requiring clinical trials that are ongoing. Certainly, the other issue is, is that, again, for those patients who do achieve those initial responses, but then progress. Yes. So again, increasingly we're seeing patients who've progressed on PD-1, who've progressed on BRAF MEK, what do you do now? And so again, that is a completely open space where we don't have any effective therapies at this point, an area of very, effective, uh, very active investigation, but truly an unanswered question and unmet clinical need.